right, so I want to start today's discussion basically by going through how Tesla describes self-driving on their website. So that essentially just includes navigate on autopilot, auto lane change, auto park, summon, and traffic light and stop sign control. That's essentially what we have right now in Australia. Interestingly, in the upcoming section, it lists as automatic driving on city streets. That's what has listed in Australia. And then auto steer on city streets. So there's probably not too much to the difference between the two websites. Maybe it's just a, a you know, a web developers uh, kind of different term of phrase there. But yeah, essentially that's what we're headed towards is the automatic city driving. And, uh, and we're very keen to get it. And uh, something pretty exciting happened in the last week. And that is the fact that you have it in your car. So 2020.4.8.10, which I think is already .11 by now. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. got 11. I, they, they are pushing the extra software updates for us just as they, I don't know if it's patching or what it is, but they are. Yeah. Very good. And so I'm absolutely keen to dive into your experience so far. I've certainly been uh, watching every, almost every video uh, of full self-driving beta I've watched on, on Twitter. So yours included. And so, yeah, just tell me about it. your experience of getting the software update. The I believe you got a call from Tesla to talk you through it. Uh, and then, yeah, since you've been using it the last couple of days. Yeah, um, I wasn't one of the people that was uh, tweeting out online that I wanted it. Of course, I mean, everybody wanted it, but I, I just feel privileged enough to go to Battery Day. So um, it was surprising. I got the email that I was going to be the beta, beta FSD. Um, I did not receive an email at the point that I would be capable of putting it on social media, but I did soon after. So I was pretty thrilled about it. So here we are. I'm capable of discussing what I've been doing with it. And um, they do phone you and let you know, um, then, you know, they give you the rules and the, the clauses and what to do and what not to do. So that's where we are. And I've taken it out quite a few times to um, drive it around. It's been a bit of a crazy week for me personally. So I've been a bit occupied with other things that I otherwise would not have been busy with. But other than that, when I have a moment, I take it out and film. Um, and I'm using my smartphone to film from, the, from, a, from kind of like a device that's stuck to the ceiling of the glass roof. A GoPro would be nice, but I don't have the 700 I want to put down for it quite yet. <laughs> so. Fair enough. That probably went on full self-driving, right? So we should definitely get yes. into that discussion about, so, so did you buy it with the car or after you bought the car, you decided to, to upgrade? So I bought the early, um, what was it? The early, what is like it? Like enhanced autopilot or? The enhanced, the enhanced autopilot. Sorry, yeah. the EAP gets confusing with early access program or yeah, enhanced right. autopilot. So I did buy the early, um, they're the enhanced autopilot. Yes. So I, I was capable of getting the upgrade at a discount if I, if I purchased ahead of time, which I don't know if they still offer that anymore. I'm thinking they had discontinued it. So. I believe so too. Yeah. I, I bought after the fact. So I had the car around six months before, uh, before opting in for full self-driving. So it was a, like many people, you know, a stretch to get to the car. And so then for the next six months, I just saved my ass off. And, and essentially um, that was the goal is get full self-driving. And, and now we see what's on the table, what that's going to unlock for us is, yeah, plenty of other cars have adaptive cruise control and some kind of lane guidance, definitely not as good as Tesla's lane centering. But what we're seeing this week through the car being able to take corners is, is something unique and, and very different than we've seen before. While there are other solutions like um, Cruise or Waymo, that sort of stuff, that that you know might be able to take a, a corner, that's using a very different technology suite. And I think what we're seeing from these videos is it's really a um, uh, really cements Tesla's vision uh, to to use computer vision and the camera suite to to navigate its world, uh, the car through the world. So that's for me seeing that. It, has really cemented that's a it's a viable option and probably the only way forward. It, it sort of has the capacity to go worldwide, doesn't it? While the, the beta is very limited to the US right now, this will essentially roll out to all the Teslas over time and they will be able to navigate city streets. And unmarked streets is also the other kind of like amazing thing to watch because personally my estate has quite a few roads to get out to the main, main roads that, that are not marked and it has to deal with that. It has to deal from your driveway to your workplace essentially. Yes, definitely. Um, it's, I mean, I've used it. I think you've probably seen, I don't know if my videos is, are as stellar as other people's, but I do have videos out. Um, it's, it's, it's going on a road without a destination. You can turn it on and it's taking me and it's navigating as it goes. So it's not exactly per se using, I mean, you, it probably wouldn't have to be a marked road in my opinion. It would have to have the capability of, I mean, uploading 
to be able to see, but um, it, it, it would go on unmarked roads. Yeah, definitely. Cause it's, and it's, and it's feeding in what it's seeing as it goes and navigating. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And so uh, how, how do you feel about it? Like, do you, do you feel like, I've, I think I've heard you reference it, that it's like a, a teenager learning to drive kind of thing. That's the kind of level we're at at the moment. So it's definitely not perfect, but some of the corners are, are look like exactly what a human behavior would do that take a left or right yeah. turn, turn into the yeah. right lane, um, avoid sort of stop cars on the edge of the roads, that kind of thing. So it's, it's really quite capable right now, but I, I imagine that you're still sort of, there's a level of nervousness and you're probably told to be careful with this because it could yeah. do, you know, um, look, I don't think anybody, ex you know, is sort of concerned about it running into cars. I think as long as you appreciate what Tesla is capable of, of identifying which objects are solid and, you know, the drivable space and all that kind of thing. And perhaps that's the new visualization gives you a bit more confidence in that, that it's right. not just, um, that it's not just it's it's not going to do random things, but it's no. it's about that turning and things like that. Do I get the lane right and maybe little corrections here or there? Right, definitely. It's uh, it's quite capable. I don't think it's as it's not reckless like people think it is. Um, as I'm driving it, it does feel like a 16 year old. I don't know if you've been with friends who are nervous drivers when you guys first. <laughs> I mean, technically, 16 year olds in the states aren't supposed to be driving with anyone for the first year, and while they're having their their temporary license before that. Um, but uh. Yeah, it would be like watching a 16 year old. They're very nervous. They're very cautious. If it's a big intersection, they're going to say, can I go now? Can I go now? Like, can I go now? And then they'll go. <laughs> like, and sometimes you might even have the adult timid driver who's, who's going and then they go, you know, but um, it's, it's reading everything and it usually is quite confident, but I mean, it, it's hard to say what, what it's like, I mean, it really does feel like a 16 year old driver, like, you yeah. know. I, that's, that's, I really think that's the best example. Yeah. I mean, it's important probably to recognize like that's where Tesla is going with this. They are trying to replicate a human, but, mm -hmm. then, but then not only match it, but surpass it in some sort of level of volume. So obviously as humans, we sort of got two eyeballs that can only look in one direction while well, it's looking at all directions at all times, multiple times per right. second. Uh, it doesn't have the blind spots that we do, right? So the, the A, B and C pillars, it, it's not uh, obfuscated by that because the cameras are external to the vehicle. So its potential capacity to drive way better than we do is, is certainly there. It's just about eating up this data and, and dealing with those edge cases that, that will really get us to the point where we, you know, we will arrive at this point where we don't need to, to monitor it and, and watch and just let it turn corners and do normal driving things. So I understand yeah. it's not turning into sort of, um, you know, car parks and that sort of stuff. So it won't go park itself. That, that sort of side of it is still to come. Yeah, they are working on it, though. I mean, because I think I, I was the one that first asked that to Elon about, can it go park itself? And he said that's coming. So they are working on it. It's it's a software piece that they're going to be adding, but I know that they are not adding it quite yet. So it's coming. But um, you, di you did kind of hit it on the head that it has more eyes than us. It's perceiving and taking in more than what we do. And I think we have to remember, like, our eyes are looking, I mean, what, how far back behind our ears can we actually take in our peripheral? It, our eyes are looking in these areas as, as we look around, but it's got eyes everywhere. So it's feeding in way more information that we ourselves are actually taking in. So it's, I find it's a lot, a lot more safer than we are. So. Yeah. I have to say, like, I, I don't even bother doing a head check anymore when I'm turning, like when I'm moving lanes, I, I know that mm -hmm. the car is evaluating that space uh, better than I could do. And it just does it flawlessly. That's one of the things that you know, I, I'm absolutely confident of. So then, then obviously more recently, we got the ability for it to track the speed signs here in Australia. So that's um, been out in the U S for a while, but it feels like maybe we've got like a one or two month lag behind you guys. So it's interesting to watch that sort of internationality of this rollout happen. And uh, yeah. Australia seems to be pretty high up on the list, which I'm pretty happy with, but the amount yeah. of different signs and stuff that I see from these videos, lane markings, the world is a weird and very different place. So there's a lot to accommodate for. And I hope that, you know, there's enough data coming out of the vehicles that we do have in Australia, obviously not the same volume you have over there, but enough data from our vehicles to, to make this a viable option fairly soon. Maybe, maybe a late Christmas present or early next year, we might see the um, FSD better over here. Yes, I think so. I think Elon was stating that there is stuff coming in December. So it sounds like I mean, it, it, it's not a careless where we're just going to throw this beta FSD to a bunch of people. Um, they feel confident enough of what they're going and how they're patching it, that they're going to be adding a few more things as we go. And December, I, I think December is a good date for as fast as it's learning um, to see 
quite a bigger release and I'm not sure exactly how that'll look, but I'm pretty sure there'll be more. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah. With, um, mm. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> sure how many people have the FSD beta, but I, I believe the number that are able to talk about it publicly, if we, if we determine that as the number, we're talking about it, you know, maybe a dozen people right now, super small group, very, small. very, very well selected. You know, you obviously all got the message of, as well as the prompt in the car, you know, it's, it tells you, be careful, this can do weird things. But, you know, right. you, you guys are aware of that. And I think you're being all pretty responsible with how, you know, you, you're not the kind of people that are going to try and like go to sleep or be drunk or any, you know, like that, that kind of yeah. stuff just can't happen in the early days of this. Or, or obviously people get very nervous when you, you propose this idea of vehicles driving themselves because people, it's hard to get people's head around the idea that a computer could be better than, than us at something, especially something as complex as driving. So it, it's a really weird societal thing that we have to go through as well. Right. And it's important that they are choosing, choosing the candidates wisely, but at some level they'll gain confidence in it that say, yeah, we can, we can put this in front of a thousand people or, you know, 50,000 people, whatever that size grows to. And yeah, it's still optional, right? You don't have to turn this on. If you're sort of a less confident yep. person, you can just leave it off and just use your car as a normal car. Right. And it's still feeding back through the neural net. It's still feeding information back to everything. You know, it's, it's still taking it all in and you don't have to use it. And I think what other people need to understand if they don't have a Tesla is that our screen, like you were stating, actually does show the whole road. And it is showing the cars that are around us. So even if I had it on or I didn't have it on, and you were stating that you have the confidence to let it make a turn, I can still see what cars would be in that space, even if I didn't want to look. So, so there's a lot of, there's a lot more um, feedback for us personally as a driver that gives us more confidence. I mean, besides their own eyes on the road. So yeah, you're right. And then we've got Germany and it, it's not confident with the use of the term autopilot, but we have to remember that planes have been flying with autopilot. I mean, for quite a long time. I mean, we almost, we feel so confident in these planes doing their maneuvers. I'd like to just have it, conversation with some of these pilots because they're engaging this quite a lot you know and it's and it seems to be a quite a good system so yeah it may be just be that confidence level to to assure the passengers that somebody is there but realistically they're probably not doing much flying these days right <laughs> yeah. I don't I'm not concerned by the term at all like I actually think what what's the the process of somebody getting behind the wheel of a Tesla, right? And would it, would there ever be an opportunity where someone gets behind there and actually believes that it could drive itself? So even if, um, well, say certainly if you're the buyer, you've seen it on the website and you sort of see the disclaimers that this, yes, we're using the term full self driving, but it's it's not yet. We're in development of that. Then you get in the car, and if you're going to turn this on, then you get the another prompt that says, "Hey, this is you know you're still responsible for this car." Um, even if even if you gave your car to a friend. Obviously, it's your own car, so you're not just going to give them a car and say, good luck, buddy. Like, it's, it's, you're going to say, here's what it can do. Let me show you, sort of walk them through it. So the number mm -hmm. of times that somebody gets in with that expectation, and then what do you do? You get in there and you say, car, drive me somewhere, and it doesn't do anything because you've, you've still got to drive it. So I just think that that's been well overplayed, that um, theory that the autopilot self-driving is, is the incorrect term. I think people are smart enough to sort of do the – determination of what that means and what Tesla were meaning by that. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, you still have to be a, there and staring at the road. I mean, we're not, I, these videos about people sleeping are just complete frauds. We already know that their friends sure. are getting the car next to them and, and filming it. Yeah, so it's not, yep. it does get a lot of hype because it gets hype but it's, it's not, it's, that's not what's happening right now. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who knows, knows that, it, you know, you don't see these videos longer than say 40 seconds, right? Because it's going to do the right. nag. And now that's something I wanted to ask you is the nag changed at all in terms of your um, talk, the talk sensor on the wheel. How often do you have to do that with the FSD, FSD beta? So it still wants my hands on there and I get the blue light nag where it says, please put your hands back because sometimes my, my pressure of my hands is not enough. Yep. So I've had people say in some of my videos, you need to just take your hands off the wheel and completely trust it, you know, like Elon would say. And I, and I had to let them know the system is set up in order to protect you that you don't fail and you don't sue Tesla because of some error on your own part. Um, so your hands need to be at the wheel and, and ready to take over in case of who knows what. I mean, and you don't, I mean, there's so much driver error in itself, but um, not with, not with the car, but with the human, but um, no, my, my hands are there. And the nag is about the same as well. 
yeah, okay. it, yep. it, it hasn't changed. So. <laughs> so how do you feel about driver monitoring as a, as a replacement for that? As the car gets better and we do less driving, are you, are you sort of thinking that that could be a direction Tesla will go back to? I know they've been, Tesla hasn't wanted to do that, but mm. um, they might go back to that idea and revisit it and, and then enable it. And I think we've seen some code leaks that suggest that's maybe at least in there, whether they enable it or not. So we've got the internal camera that's watching the driver themselves. And we already have been hinted at that possibly it's watching eye movement and where your eyes are at. And I mean, people are all freaking out like, oh no, it's in like big brother surveillance, but it's Tesla surveillance. And who knows what they'll do with that surveillance, which is not what they think it is. Um, it's just the computer itself monitoring where your hands are at, where your eyes are at. And it's not a bad thing. Um, I don't know, maybe people can opt out of it. It's actually probably a safe thing. The amount of people, I mean, just in general, the last 10 years, and even, the, I mean, still that you you can drive on the interstate and look to your right, and a man will be driving a truck and his face is down and buried into a car, or I mean, into a phone and you're just like, how are you even driving? Like, <laughs> this yeah. is so dangerous. Yeah. So, I mean, we have to stay undistracted and it's it's not a bad thing. I mean, the car, the car needs to know if you're not watching, so. Yeah. I feel like it would be a good feature to add to, as you said, maybe as an option and the, let the users choose which which um, option they'd like to, to have. Because certainly crews uh, on those very select roads, that does look in some respects, when people watch those videos of like, you can actually, they're pitching as you can take your hands off the wheel and you're like, well, that looks almost in some respects that they're ahead of Tesla. When, yeah. when in fact, we know that that's such a severely limited sort of part of the world, you can do that instance. And, and as soon as you hit in counter a corner, you've got to, got to disengage. So I, I think that would be great for Tesla at least to say, look, we're, we're in every way we're better than everybody else. You know, certainly the LiDAR uh, solutions are, are incredibly limited. We see that they're localised to, to specific areas. And it's funny that um, one of the things they rely on is these HD maps, which obviously Tesla doesn't. But ironically, if Tesla feeds all the data back into a centralized model, they could pretty much produce a HD map and maybe sell that to other other automakers with their solutions. But uh, yeah, I just kind of want to, to understand you, you know, where you were at in terms of thinking and, and driver monitoring. I, I think the code had, yeah, are you looking at a phone, that kind of suggestion. So they're at least able to detect yeah. at that level. Yeah, because I think, I mean, it's quite unfair for the manufacturer for Tesla itself to release this and trust it to people come to find that People, I mean, we know people, people are so happy. People don't like to take responsibility. And if you're looking, if you're a person who's always on your phone, I mean, that put that's puts Tesla in quite a compromising place. If they're giving you software that says it'll protect you. I mean, at some point, I imagine if it sees you on the phone all the time, like you'd have to sign some kind of legal waivers. Like you, you, <laughs> you're just a danger to everybody. Like we see yeah. it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think, it would, I mean, it would pull you over, right. Would be the logical thing. If, if for this small window of time yeah. between where it's mm -hmm. like, we're, we're nearly there, but not quite at full. So like once we're there, it'll be like, great. Yeah. Use your phone, get in when you're drunk, like go to sleep. That's yeah. an amazing place we're headed for, but we have to kind of yeah. do these steps to get there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, we are dealing with um, uh, safety boards that are still, I mean, a lot of them are not quite familiar with what's going on. Do they, they just see these videos of people sleeping and they just raise alarm and what's going on. And, and we, we need to, you know, you have to prove yourself to some degree. Tesla's in that place where it knows confidently what it's capable of, but it's got people in Germany with the auto industry who don't even want it on the road. So they're going to make up who knows what to keep it off the road. So, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm interested to hear more about your reaction. So did you um, take friends and family and stuff uh, along for a ride or like, how's that been with other, sharing it with other people? So for, for having the beta, yeah, no, one, nobody's gone with me yet. I offer it okay. to people. And nobody, I mean, <laughs> I have people that are around the U.S. and people all over who are like, I want to ride. I want to, and you know, I'm open to anybody who'd like to film and come out. But nobody quite yet has done that. And maybe because some of the people have seen kind of the um, the extra weight of the craziness that is happening sure. this week, and they just don't maybe possibly want to bother me. But I am open. Hey, if you guys want to come out and film, you're welcome to. But um. Not yet. No, I have not, but I have sure. offered to like people. Yeah. When I when I first got to review a, a Model S, uh, I think it was 2016 or something when they first came out here, uh, I kind of felt like, you know, you're driving past all these other cars and they don't know what you've got. Like you've got something right. really special in your car and you kind of just want to tell us like, hey guys, like my car drives yeah. itself, you know, like all bar drives itself. It's uh, 
yeah, it's quite an amazing feeling. And um, even, even something like Summon is just like a, everybody talks about it as this throwaway thing of like, you know, it's a, it's a party trick and then you do it twice and then you do it. But I've actually made a pretty serious conscious effort that every time I go shopping, that I'll mm. call my car up from the, from the car park to, to come get me. And, and just as a test, basically, to watch it learn the different version releases and, and watch it improve. And I noticed that in some of the videos, people have been showing um, that it's now prioritising, say, the right-hand side of the road. So when right. it gets to you, it doesn't just pull across, you know, uh, to you where you're standing. It actually will stay where you're expected to. And I see those sort mm -hmm. of those steps being put together, you know, we're not too far away from where, as you said, where, where it can drop you off and pick you up. And, and those videos that we've seen from Tesla quite some time ago, it's mm. just now flowing to us. So I guess we're a little bit delayed on where, where the, time, the timeline originally was from, from Autonomy Day last year in about April. Now we're kind of a year and a half on from that and it's ready for, you know, ready for prime time. So yeah, <laughs> amazing to see the progress in, in that time and that it's, it's now hitting end consumers, which is good. Yeah, definitely. And the summit, I mean, the summit is great. My favorite videos is when it's pouring rain and people right. just absolutely, because who wants to go stand out in the rain? So <laughs> yeah, that's a great, it's a great feature. And I've even used it, you know, we all go in the parking garage where, God, like that's the last parking spot and it's between these two vehicles they are super tight or it's just the way it's designed. And so you need to pull in there. So you, you pull it in there with someone and you pull it out of there with someone and it works excellently. So. Yeah, I do wish on the parking that it was able to park without cars beside it. I feel that's mm -hmm. pretty limited at the moment. There is a number mm -hmm. of times where I would use, um, you know, the, the assisted park um, just when there's another car or just to, even when there's a spare space, if I'm going to reverse in or something like that. Like I can do it. Like I'm a pretty, you know, I think pretty reasonable capable. driver. Yeah, pretty capable. Yeah. But uh, it would be handy. I would use it more often. And then you start to feel a bit more like the list of things that you're doing as a driver are quickly getting ticked off and and we're, we're nearly there kind of thing. So what about the price of FSD? You know, obviously people see your videos and they're very keen to, to you know, oh, okay, now's the time. And obviously the impending price rise uh, sort of sparked a lot of people. I seen a bunch of people sharing that they'd, they'd finally opted in and paid up. I got it at eight and a half thousand in Australia and now it's at mm -hmm. 10, 10, one Australian dollars. And I think it's about to go to 10,000 US. So it's quite sort of a milestone to sort of surpass that $10,000 mark. So I just want to, to get your thoughts on what you think about the price. Is it rightly priced for what it is right now? Ooh, um, it's going to go up. I mean, Elon How high stated, do you think? Yeah, like, I mean, I know he's referenced 100,000, but that's $100,000 yeah, with a value. Yeah. I, I sort of align that to the fact that if you put your car in the robotaxi fleet and you're making 30 grand a year, then 100 grand is, you know, it'll pay for itself. Exactly. But is, it, is a user going to face, you know, because the number of people who've stretched to get a Tesla is one thing, and then you've got to go again to get full self-driving. It's quite an ask. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of a catch-22 because those who are doing the robotaxi fleet, I mean, are stretching it to get into it, or they have the money to do it. That is true. Um, I mean, it definitely is worth that much money, but to get the average person into it might be more of a stretch. I mean, there is financing, but I don't I don't know. Like, it, it, it's going to be the worst in my opinion to go full autonomy so it's going to be worth it and so I don't know why Tesla wouldn't hone in on that but I mean that is a that's probably going to be quite a subject as we continue the price and Elon did warn us and people and the funny thing is people get on Twitter and they get mad they're like oh Elon that's so much money or but I mean I, once again I don't know any other company I talk to the CEO and tell them well I'm not you know that Apple phone you just released even though Steve Jobs just designed it like I like the old design and maybe most people do like nobody's going to listen to you. <laughs> they don't care, you know, like about the, like Elon cares. <laughs> yeah. I think he's, um, he's very, very diligent in like, in, so he'll, he'll hint at things, right? So you'll say like the price is going to go up. And I don't think at that level, like many people really took him for his word. It's like, yeah, yeah, it'll get more expensive. They kind of like played it off. And then the price goes up. It's like, well, I told you this would happen. And then price goes up. It's like, well, I told you this would happen. You know, <laughs> like, what are you yeah. expecting, guys? I told you this was going to happen. And that's, that's exactly. almost similar to what happened at Battery Day, right? It's like the other, the other guys in the industry. It's like, this is what we're doing. And then I'm sure five years from now, they'll turn around and go, oh, my God, I can't believe how many batteries Tesla are making. It's like, <laughs> I told you this was what we're going to do. Like, you couldn't ask for a better, you know, better openness in the company. Is, is We're going to give you a script, and we hope that you come along for the ride. But but we're real about this. We're serious. So take us take yeah. us seriously when we say things. Yeah. 
Yeah. And people say, I mean, I, I was saying that a while ago, like Elon may be late, but he always delivers. And the thing is like, it's not just Elon. I mean, obviously, I mean, who runs five companies successfully the way he does and always delivers, always delivers. Um, he, he's the momentum he's getting. What do they say? The first five years, you don't make money five to 10 years. I mean, the momentum he's got with the early investments on these companies is just unheard of. And I think with Tesla, he's finally got that momentum where when he's warning you that they're going to do it, it's not going to be late, late Elon delivery anymore. It's going to yeah. be, it's going to be soon because he's got enough momentum. They've got enough like CapEx. They're doing very well in like a, like, like if he, if they say it, don't expect it to be delayed much anymore, in my opinion. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I find a couple, couple of things really interesting. So the when the Model Three first started shipping, and the, obviously some people lease those. Yeah, Elon was quite clear. He's like, we want the back at the end of the lease because that's the expectation was full self driving was probably going to be completed by now. So the, the delays right. have probably impacted that a little bit. But you know where they're heading, right? So. Right. At, at some point, they're going to stop making cars for, for consumers or certainly a lot less of them. And they're just going to be making cars for themselves. And then it's mm. not like car plus profit to consumer. It's like car, you know, what's the wholesale cost of building that? And then it goes out to the world and then you're making this, the software returns on the service. So it's um it's a very different world ahead, I think. And, and a lot of people will start to question car ownership. If that robot taxi right. fleet can really come in at the dollars that they're talking about and fractions of what Uber and Lyft are charging, Right, you know, and you can get anywhere, anytime for a couple of bucks. Like I think that changes the game significantly. Right. I mean, wh how long? I mean, when was when was when did Uber first show up on the market? Two thousand fifteen. Like how's, how? Yeah, long? fourteen, fifteen, something around that time. Yeah. And I mean, it's because of because of COVID, we're already seeing it being shaken up, and if it'll last, and the way things are. So within five years, I mean, within the first two two years of Uber. In the in major metropolises, people were using it and they were delighted with it because it was this new service that was different than a taxi, you know. And and robo taxi is going to uh, it's going to substitute that. It's going to be something new and it will take off really fast because we've already been conditioned by an Uber or Lyft kind of idea. So as soon as robo taxi takes off, um, Tesla can fully invest in that and and do really well. And the funny thing is, it's like. Elon has been putting it out there for so long. We feel like, like people always say, you know, just stop talking and actually show us. But the thing is like, he knows what he's doing by telling us this. He's letting us have an opportunity and the retail investors that are investing in this and they're dreaming with it and they're thinking how to make it happen. They're going to jump all over it as soon as it's ready, you know? So. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to pay the driver. That's the huge thing. And you get another seat right, right. in the car if you're trying to fit more people. So that's, it's like better in a couple of very significant ways. And then right. if it can go and charge itself, that's the thing he's got right. to nail now. And that's, and I you know, think even Uber, yeah. oh yes, Uber and Lyft drivers, I think oh, some of them, I think for a temporary amount of time, there will be um, people who will be actually driving them kind of in the robot taxi fleet, possibly like human drivers for just a little bit, kind of like we're doing the beta, beta FSD. It might be maybe for a year or something. We might see a little bit of something like that or an option. I think there'll be more than just one one design of the way that we're going to do robo taxi there'll be a few more other designs but you were saying we're going to see less and less ownership of vehicles which is probably probably true i do love owning my vehicle though <laughs> i do too and uh, you know uh, just random things like if you want to store things in your vehicle or you want to have a babysit in there or those kind of things there will be reasons where people make that you know calculation in, and add up how much it costs to own a vehicle how much it costs to get the service for a year and just yeah. it may be a premium to have your own vehicle but some people will make that decision but i think we're already seeing that in metro areas that, that a lot of people are just using Uber instead of owning a vehicle. It just makes sense for them. Definitely um, Manhattan so, too. Yeah. yeah. So that'll just continue. Uh, there's no stopping that trajectory. I think that just happens in more places as it becomes more available. So yeah, it's um it's probably worthwhile we turn to a little bit of focus on like what's next, I guess, in terms of like, what do you think the to-do list after driving the car what are the pieces of driving at the moment that you're kind of having to take over that you think that it would need to, to accomplish? Well, one of them that I did have to work on today, and I think we've probably seen it because I did just see a video, ironically. I didn't see it, but um, I've heard about it. I know Kim Paquette did the roundabout. I didn't watch Your it roundabout. all. And then I yep. saw that Raj had, Tesla Raj had put one out. I didn't view his because I was actually on the out. I had the idea to go do one myself right before I saw his, but um, I went and did a small roundabout. It, it, I don't, there's another name for it. I can't think of it right now, but um, it, it's so small. It's in a neighborhood. It's, you know, it's just one car that passes around it, but it would get to it, kind of pause. 
the wheel would kind of jerk left, jerk right, then jerk left, like it wanted to just turn left. And it can't, and here in the States, I would drive uh, counterclockwise around yeah, the roundabout. Sure. Yep. So it needed to drive right. And all of a sudden it wanted to drive left. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> I have to take over and make it, make it go around. I, we, I tried that three, four, five times and then it still was a little bit confused. I mean, mind it was within a half an hour period. So. See, that's really interesting. So I'll watch the Raj, Raj video because uh, I found that really fascinating. So his, his example was a roundabout. It was a pretty low lying roundabout. And so you've got sort of a bank that uh, not not a hard edge, which I think is obviously used for the detection of like gutters and things like that. So Tesla are pretty good at that. But this roundabout was sort of a much more subtle edge. And so hmm. he goes through it and he had to take over. So it was about to sort of run him into it. So he takes over, that's fine. Goes through it again. And then a third time with somebody in the passenger seat and he goes, oh, look, I'll show you sort of a disengage. It doesn't quite do roundabouts yet. And then it did it. It is like had wow. learnt between the two you know, two previous times and it perfectly navigated him through the roundabout and avoided that sort of lower lying section of it. So wow. this ability to learn on the fly seems pretty, you know, pretty interesting. And um, it'll be interesting to see if you guys now are on a trajectory where you're getting like a couple of day updates rather than the couple of weeks kind of schedule that we're on before. I think so. I think we're going to get updates quite often. I think because we're just a small test group and and i mean they are watching us but that 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 uh, roundabout was interesting the roundabout that i see and i'm going to be releasing it tonight is um it's a hard curve it's it's red marked on the screen and it's got hard curbs all the way around it they're not subtle and it's quite a raised bed in the middle of the roundabout so it's quite an object that it notices but it, it just couldn't couldn't figure it out which was interesting but it'll it'll figure it out i have no doubt that it will like i i probably will go tomorrow and it probably will have it down so. <laughs> yeah. I've, yeah. um, I'm, I'm specifically like, a, you know, aware of roundabouts. I have four on my commute. So if I go home, come home for lunch and go back, it's like 16 a day kind of thing. So <laughs> if I can do double lane roundabouts, I'll be, I'll be set. That'll be amazing. That, that would put me in a position where I could go basically from home to work uh, without yeah. intervention. So I think that's kind of the goal is, is to hit that benchmark first. And then obviously you've got the longer sort of the, the touristy stuff. Oh, I want to go for a weekend drive and, and go to a random place. But if you could nail, you know, 90% of people's day-to-day -day commutes, I think, you, you know, you make very happy customers for that, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I guess the thing um, that it's not doing too is, is while we, you know, have the car drive more of itself, we, we do still have to pay attention for things like potholes and debris on the road and that kind of thing. So it's, uh, well, it might've been mentioned that's coming in the future. At the moment, there's no sign of it doing that. You might not have encountered those yet, but you're not seeing any mm -hmm. sort of diversion for, for potholes or anything. So I was going to take it to places where I know that the roads are completely torn up by potholes. And I did not do that today. I'll probably do that tomorrow because I'm going to okay. go do some other stuff that I want to, I don't want to quite give away right now. I don't <laughs> sure. know if this video is going out tonight, but, um, it did, it did veer away to center a manhole that I went over. So it made sure that it went centered over the manhole. And yeah, that, that was interesting because when you put in a new development, I don't know if you see this in Australia, often the developers have to put the road in as well. And they will put down the first layer of um, blacktop and they won't put down the extra layers that build up. So the manholes often stick up quite, quite a three to four inches above oh, okay. the ground. But this manhole was just a regular manhole. But I mean, it would be important to steer away from some of those manholes and not just hit them with your yeah. tire. That can't be good for your whole alignment. Yeah, so. we, we tend not to have manholes on the roads over here. Uh, oh, they they tend uh, more on the sidewalk and stuff. So yeah, that not really a challenge, but I, I get, yeah, that's a good example. So maybe, maybe we'll have to wait and see more of your videos to, to see if that's a, a thing, but we know it's, it's coming. It would have to be right. Eventually when we hands off and, and it's driving it, it, you don't want it busting rims and that sort of stuff driving over potholes. No. Yeah. No, you don't want to. Yeah. yeah. So how that's do you think they solve the charging issue? Like when, you know, when the cars are essentially on their own, they're driving, they're going to have to recharge. Do you think they get home and they sort of ask people or you just have manned superchargers and, and they drive oh. to there and recharge? I think both. If it's in the RoboTaxi network you're stating, um, I've seen companies and we've got the RoboTaxi snake that Elon yeah. says is coming. He says it's coming. So they are in the, we know that they're in the, um, design phase of making something. And I'm assuming that they already are addressing this because we're also concerned about it. But there is options that it can charge at with a robo, you know, an automated charger. Cause I mean it's sensitive. You just bring the charger head to the to the to the flap that's supposed to open up to, to insert the charger. It will it will sense it and flip up. So you could just drive up to a 
network that was just for uh, you know autonomous charging and it would charge it they'd have to put those out and i'm assuming they'll put them out in the major metropolises because really a robo taxi network is going to move best in a big city you know like where That's you have true. a larger yeah population so I'm, I'm assuming they're getting ready to put some of that out so that's, yeah, my, so less, that's my opinion yeah so less of a task of like going and upgrading every supercharger that's out there more about selecting <laughs> locations and then and then they just return to there yeah right right Very and cool. I guess if you yeah yeah I definitely think that yeah and maybe at home occasionally you know it's your car is tired plug it in you know <laughs> Yeah, I, I think about like w when you get in, like the route that you go, you, you're like giving it the voice command or just navigating in the nav to tell it where to go at the moment. So the beta FSD, I tried the voice commands. I put some videos out, some little clips that were cheeky the other day because someone said, if you say that your arse is cold, it will warm it up. <laughs> sure. And I'm like, well, this is interesting. I wonder if I say your arse is cold instead of my arse. So I did that and it warms up the front two seats. Nice. And I was like, wow. And I, how about if I say our arse is cold and it warmed up the whole, all the seats in the car. I'm like, wow. So I've tried these commands on beta FSD and they had stated that this is a different, this is a different build. It's not going to do everything the same as before because it, it doesn't need to give priority to my bum being cold. Sure. As it's trying yeah. to do this driving, it needs to focus on the driving right now. Not that that software can't be uploaded. It will be, it will be brought back in, but um, it, it didn't, it didn't recognize it. It's kind of the basic where he told us say drive home and and um i even tried that command and it didn't take it so it's not it's oh not interesting the now. Oh, yeah, okay, it, gotcha. it, yeah yeah it wasn't interesting it did it did make a phone call like i asked it to make a phone call but um it's very basic back to the commands like gotcha. when we just got voice commands so yeah yeah interesting because so i think about when you get in the car and it's got the capacity to take you anywhere um mm -hmm. is it is it going to rely on you as a driver at telling it where to go every time like that's going to get kind of annoying right so mm, yeah. you could have a, it's a smart connected car you could actually have it do a, you know a few smarter things so already it's you know doing path planning based on the time of day so if i get in and i'm, I'm regularly going to work at you know 7 45 it's going to plot that route for me automatically I then so. you know then the next question is like why would it not bounce from your calendar you know you have a series of events and you get in at 11 o'clock your next appointment's 10 minutes away it drives you there so I, you, think, you, yeah. I agree mm -hmm. I think the option will be if you, I mean, if you're a detailed, organized, responsible person that you can plug up your calendar and that, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, I don't know if you've ever driven home and you, and you find that you drive on autopilot from your mind, not autopilot from the car. You just automatically kind of blank out and you drive somewhere and you realize you're there and you're like, oh, this is what I usually do, but I was supposed to stop somewhere else. So I think it will be on a program set option. If you, if you, if you choose that, I just think that's obvious. That just seems where we're going, in my opinion, because so many people do ride shares. So many people have to get up at five or six and 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 go somewhere, and it would be less of a headache if the vehicle, especially robo taxi, just showed up for you in the group. You know, so yeah, for sure. What about? Um, I want to touch on the competitors for a second because I, it, you know, as I talked about at the start, like computer vision is a fairly controversial avenue to achieve self driving. And Tesla and maybe a couple of others out of China are, are sort of going down that route. But Tesla, certainly, I agree with you, look on track to be the first one to deliver level four, level five autonomy. So, so the challenges with something like Waymo, when we see them release a video and, and start to offer the service in Austin, they, um, you know, they're, they're very localized, right? And so they have a scale problem. That's the real challenge in front of them is that the technology actually looks like it's turning corners and, and doing okay with those mapped areas. But how could you ever map the world? And then the second you've mapped it, it's out of date. So like remap it, constantly having it mapped. So you have to have a car drive mm -hmm. through the area to map it before the other cars can drive through and navigate and use that data. So I feel like they've got really, a, a as, as Elon mentioned, they've got a real challenge ahead that, you know, they, they, it looks like the right path, but they hit this limit of, hey, actually this doesn't scale. Yeah, because you can't, that, I mean, it is quite a task. Isn't it crazy to think that Google's trying to map everything <laughs> and that it's as if it's a railroad track that the car can only run on to a certain point that it's already mapped it. Yeah, that's that's nuts in itself. And I and it's going slow. It's not like it's not like Waymo is. I mean, it's it seems like when you view the videos are going quite under the speed limit. It's very sure. cautious. Yeah, I don't I don't know how they're going to do all that. And it doesn't seem it doesn't seem efficient when you can just teach the computer the way that Tesla has how to navigate on on roads that on, are unmarked you know so yeah, yeah I'd have and to keep you. as a passenger right you get into waymo and say take me here and it goes no i can't go there like that's a yeah. terrible experience right you do that once and you will never use the service again 
Yeah. Or is you get in the Tesla and then you, you can go anywhere. Well, I think, I, yeah, that reminds me. I mean, I, I was in England and I had just bought some brand new black leather boots. It was like August when they have all their sales at their stores. And I bought these brand new black leather boots that I loved. Walked, I think I walked three blocks in them and I had blisters. And I said, I need, I need a ride back to my place. And it wasn't, it was like five blocks away. And I get a black cab that pulls over. The guy was grumpy. He did not like Yankees, as he stated. And he, I said, I've got these blisters. And he just did not want to drive me. You know, I did not want to use a black cab after that. Yeah. Yeah. So if a car is going to give you this bad experience, you, I mean, by default, you're automatically not going to want to get in it again. You're like, that's not very reliable for sure. It's a waste of your time. Absolutely. All right. Well, I, re- I mean, we've had a great chat and I reckon that's probably enough for today. Um, <laughs> if you've got more thoughts you want to you wanna share, but I'm sure we'll catch up again and, uh, and have another chat soon because uh, it's incredibly exciting to chat to somebody with full self-driving and uh, hear your thoughts on it. And uh, yeah. many more videos I expect uh, to come from you and everybody else with it. Yeah, definitely. Many more videos. And I like your shirt, the Model 3. That's a great shirt. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, little yeah. little bonus, uh, went to the media launch in Australia for Model 3. So got to right. drive a performance around a track before they were out. So that was kind of a, a great uh, great little event I got to go to. 190 is as fast that. as I've had it for, you know, down the straight there. Um, so it was, it was just, that blew me away because it was still, I was, uh, it was, say, July last year and then it was September before I got the car. So it was, uh, it just really made me hungry to get inside it. And once I've, you know, like everybody who drives a Tesla, really, once you get it and you, you own it, it's it's just such a different experience. And then then you look at the other cars very differently, you know, yeah. and, and you just want everybody to be able to experience what you can experience with the Tesla. So it's kind yeah. of a, you know, it's great to hear that they're working on cheaper cars because that's often been the feedback from friends and family. It's like, great, I'd love one, how much? And then you kind of have to sort of quietly say the price. And, uh, and, and then they, um, and then, you know, they say, look, that's great, but I just, I'm never buying a car in that price bracket. So to, to hear them yeah. working towards a US $25,000 car, which probably around 40,000 in Australia, I think that's viable and a much more, you know, a wider percentage of people buy cars in that price point. So yeah, Definitely. big future ahead, a lot more vehicles, Cybertruck, a lot of people are keen to get that. Yeah, that's going to be great. I hope they, I hope that the Cybertruck actually goes on you know, they're not going to be, it won't be out here until probably mid-year next year, the beginning releases of it. But I do hope they take it on an international uh, showcase. I mean, with COVID, it's been hard, but I imagine that they want to bring it over to Australia and let it be showcased. So, and you, you got a performance three yourself, you said. Right? I do. Yeah, yeah. Very yep. nice. And what is your setup? So just white on black. Yeah. White on black. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the time uh, when they first launched in Australia, they didn't offer white interior. So... Yeah. In the tail end of while I was waiting for my car, they did start to offer it and I was super tempted because I'd driven the one with white in and it looks just, it's so nice. Yeah, um, I love it. But it would have yeah. it would have meant a delay in me getting it and I kind of prioritised, like, I want this first, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and my car was, and because it was a showroom and they were discounting showroom cars because they were okay. showroom. I got quite a discount. And so it was, do I take this excellent discount or do I get a red on white? Which, I mean... They didn't warn me. They're like, if you really like that one <laughs> setup there, it'll haunt you. You won't back. And I still want a red on my, so. <laughs> yeah. You look at the, the, yeah, you look at the photos and, and even, you know, now the Chrome delete and the new, new revision, you kind of like, that's nice. But I do, yeah. I do think, um, cause I've got the performance stealth model. So it was about say eight grand yeah. Australian cheaper than the full top spec. So yes, I miss the red brake calipers and a couple of other things, but I think I got the best model to be honest. And they so. don't offer it here anymore. So it's kind of great. Yeah, I mean, mine's a long-range rear-wheel drive. They're unicorns now. I mean, and they've got great mileage, so. Yeah, I find it, you know, I drive for a week and then just go visit a supercharger. It's like 10 minutes away. And, you know, thanks to referrals, I've, I've got uh, like 80,000 Ks of free driving. So it's, wow. uh, yeah, it's kind of mental. It, to drive for free is something I wasn't sort of expecting. But it's amazingly freeing to just be able to get in the car and go anywhere and, it, it not in the back of your mind, like ticking away, like this is costing me money. Or if I go for a trip from here to Melbourne kind of thing, that's, you know, 60 bucks in fuel or whatever, it's just it's free now. So it's a really great experience to drive and just really thankful people have been using my referral link to, to go buy their Teslas. So it's awesome. My goodness. How did you get so many referrals? That's a lot. <laughs> it is. I mean, obviously I, I like, I've been covering Tesla for years and the second I got my yeah. referral code, I, I started including it in blog posts and, um, you know, I, I write about, Tesla quite a lot on TechAU and I think uh, 
they're probably the most interesting company. Like I cover technology in general, like a lot of consumer mm-hmm. tech, a bit of business stuff, but um, there's just so many moving parts to it. Like you mentioned, like there's so many sub parts to the, to the brand and, and side projects as well, the boring company and SpaceX, obviously, but Tesla as, a, as an entity that just moves so fast. So it's almost, well, it's easy to see why people do podcasts about them, right? Cause there's so much to talk about. Right. And there's a lot to explain, you know, it could be the store refresh or it could be a new model launch or whatever it is. There's, there's just so much. And especially full self driving. That's, that's one of the things where I was so excited to get it is because now that unlocks the future of me being able to experience it and then talk to the world about it. Um, so mm-hmm. I'm happy to buy a ticket to that show. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Thank you. Absolutely. Not a problem. And I hope to talk to you soon. Yeah, definitely. We'll talk again. All right. Bye. <laughs>